this is the Provoke Brawn, and this is a video to compare the Lee and Lee AL120 V2s with the original AL120s. Now I do too much mansplaining in my explainer videos apparently, but I'm going to talk to you about the various different things that make these new fans interesting, the subtle changes that you might not notice, and the awesome ones that you probably will. The AL120 V2s have been changed in a number of different ways. For example, they're slightly thicker at 28mm for increased performance. They have a higher airflow and static pressure rating, as well as a comparable decibel level, and the interesting fact that they'll also run at between 0 RPM and 2500, so they're a lower bottom range and higher top end range of RPM, and some subtle RGB changes. So subtle, in fact, that I had to use some labeling to show you the differences between them. You'll notice that the V2s have a slight difference change at the rear of them in terms of the way the setup is for the exhaust part of the fan and so the sort of fins on the back of it. But there's some very, very subtle RGB lighting along the edges of the fans now as well. You'll also notice some other things that I'll get to in a minute, including some different cables. But you can see here on the right hand side, the original AL120 fans, and then on the left, the V2s. You'll notice some very, very slight differences there. And out of the box, they look almost identical. So there's very little difference there visually. However, there are some hidden ones and some that aren't terribly obvious. For example, the clips, the wiring's also changed. The logic of the wiring has changed. So now, for example, you can daisy chain two groups of fans together. I'll get to that in a minute. You can also remove the clips from the ends so that they can be used on radiators with ease. And there are a number of other nice things about it. Now, I'm going to leave the specs in the description so you can find out more about them. But I also just want to put them side by side and show the differences and talk about the changes. Because you'll notice ever so slightly fatter now at 28 mil, which is an important point of note because it means better performance, but it also means that you need to make sure you use the right screws, the ones that are included in the box, to make sure that these are held in place properly and that will sit properly on your case and on your radiators and other things. The improved airflow performance should mean they're also better on radiators than they were traditionally. And I love the AL120s. I really like them when they originally launched and now they're even better in the V2 versions in a number of really nice ways. And Lee and Lee's constantly improving its fan logic and the way they work. And they're still fantastic because obviously daisy chainable fans makes life a lot easier, especially in terms of the wiring. And the wiring is one of the interesting things that's changed. So you can see the original AL120s had this sort of semi-fat connector that clips on and obviously connects up to the gold pins that you see on the fan itself. The new V2s have a much more flush system that sort of hides away. It's smaller for a start, but it also tucks nicely into the fan body, which means it protrudes less out, so it's less likely to get in the way, both in your case and on the radiator. Whether you've got an all-in-one cooler or a custom loop system, you can see it's a lot thinner, a lot more compact. You'll also notice that both these fans are white, and yet the new V2 setup includes white cables, whereas the original had black cables with it. So small points there, but some interesting subtle changes again, and you can see the installation logic for those, but much, much smoother, smaller setup in terms of the way those connectors work. I will admit that I think the originals were a bit less fiddly to install, as you've just seen the process for it there, but once you've got them sorted out, it's a much cleaner affair, much better looking and more manageable. The logic, however, is basically the same. You can see that both these connectors both have two cables come out of them, one for RGB and one for fan power, and you need to follow the same logic. Now, I've done a video separately on how to wire both fans and the AL120 V2s specifically. I'll link to that in the description so you can find out more about it. But as you'll see, when you buy a single fan, you get a single fan and these two cables and then an RGB adapter cable that I'll show you in a second. So essentially you can then plug that in and connect it up. And obviously these are uni fans, they're interlocking daisy chainable fans. They just clip together and you can install multiple fans. That's the same on the original AL120s and now the V2s do the same. But there are some changes in the logic which mean potentially you can group more together but I'll talk about that in a second. So the logic for installing these is fairly straightforward. 
RGB connector goes on there. That's a five volt RGB header that connects up to the motherboard. So a standard, if you're using a single fan for some reason, you've got fan power and then the RGB connector. Again, you'll see that if you put these cables side by side, so the black ones on the right hand side are from the original fans, exactly the same logic, exactly the same design with a single connector. So if you need to add in one or a group of fans onto your motherboard, you can do that really easily. That one fan power cable goes to the system or chassis van header on your motherboard. And then the other one uses that adapter and connects up to the five volt RGB header on your motherboard. Connect three fans together and then connect them up to that RGB header and you've got one group. And if you've got another RGB header, you can connect that up and you could have two groups potentially. So fairly straightforward at a basic level. But the AL120V2s have changed ever so slightly especially if you buy a triple pack because now you can put them in groups of four, four fans per channel. So there's four channels on the controller that you can see here, but this controller also has some sync points on it, which is an interesting point of note. And it has two SATA power connectors. The original only had one. This essentially means that you can connect up interesting ways. One other thing that's interesting though, is that that sync connector, so the sync connectors at the top, the smaller ones actually work with the RGB cable from the V2 fans, but also from the original fans. So remember that RGB cable you saw on the original AL120s, that will plug in here as well. So you can theoretically still connect the AL120 standard fans to this, but then you have no connection for the power cable. So you just bear that in mind because you need to plug that into the motherboard. So just keep that in mind. The actual logic for this though, when you bought a triple package, you have this control box and then you have these four cables that you see on the left hand side. And these are flat, fat connectors that control both the RGB and power in one single cable instead of two. This is one of the big differences between the two fans and the logic between them. And this is why you need a new controller because the original controller that you can see here it had a cable that connected up to your fan and your group of fans. And then at the other end of that was two cables that then plugged into the control box. So you're seeing it here, the process for this. This is old footage from the original fans. Basically those two cables plugged in separately, one for RGB and one for power. They were a slightly different position, but that's the logic of how they worked. And it was fairly straightforward at the time, but now it's changed vastly and is considerably easier because now instead of having two cables per group of fans, you've now just got one. So originally, historically, if you had four groups of fans, you'd end up with a lot of cables. And now you potentially only got four cables maximum, which is pretty interesting. So you've got a flat connector that plugs into your single AL120 V2 and connects up there. And then you plug in the other end of the control box. Now you can have four fans in a group and per this fat cable, so one connector there will enough to power up to four fans from that one controller. And you can obviously have the logic of installing multiple fans. So you may well have multiple groups. So for example, three groups of three, that's a pretty common setup that you might have in your case, three groups of three, and then maybe a single fan at the back for an exhaust fan on your case. It's going to vary. So here's a sort of demo of that logic. Again, I've done an in-depth guide on this wiring. If you want to find out more, check out that in the description. But another change they've made is they've added in this daisy chain cable, which actually goes between the two groups of fans. So if you want to, you can remove one of these cables and instead use a daisy chain connection, which basically connects up the fans from its connector on one side to the other group of fans on there. This means that you can actually put two groups of three together and it's a maximum of six and then connect those up with one single cable that then goes into the control box. There are two of these daisy chaining ball connections cables in the control pack with the triple pack and you can connect up obviously two groups of six but you can still only do a maximum of 16 on this control box so it's worth keeping that in mind. You can't change the way that logic works but it does mean that you can control more. And this is part of the reason why the control box has two SATA connectors now, because obviously a lot of power potentially out of there, but it does mean that you can change the logic of how these things sit in the case and maybe improve the wiring of it. You will notice that that connector that goes between those two is a little bit fatter though. So it's not the same as the standard one. So there you can see a look at that. Now some of the RGB lighting has changed as well. And I'll leave some of that in the description. 
and we may do a separate video on this, but I just wanted to demonstrate and see some of the RGB differences between them. The other biggest takeaway though is that the V2 fans have a zero RPM mode, so they will potentially not spin when they're not required, which is pretty awesome. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Thanks for watching. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.